In my previous video in this React series, we discussed the idea of it overall being kind of a bad idea to try to mutate mutable state values. So if you have an object or array, it's generally a bad idea to just perform a mutation on those pieces of state rather than creating a copy or an entirely new piece of state. So today I'm going to discuss some more bad ideas when it comes to manipulating arrays and you know if you're kind of starting out with react or even you just want a refresher on some things that just don't work then this video is going to be for you so let's look at a few different things that you might want to do with arrays here so we have this page that i created so here you can see the page and we have three different buttons and add random number remove last number and sort numbers three different buttons to do that and when we click add random number it calls this add random number function when we click remove last number it calls the remove last number function and same thing with sort numbers and this sort number function and if we go look at these functions what you're going to see is that for add random number let's focus on this one right now what we want to do is just add a random number to this piece of state this array this random numbers array and you might initially think that the way to do this is to call random numbers dot push and then you add a random number to this array and then you set the state with your random number pushed into it so we push in a new number to the random number state and then we set it here but if i come here and i promise you i'm running my application right now you can see these kind of pulsating in the background so this application is running when i go to click on add a random number i'm clicking as loud as i can but my mic probably isn't picking it up i promise you that i am clicking on this and it's not adding any numbers here so what's going on here as you can probably guess is we are just mutating this random number state instead of creating a whole new different array so using your state and then trying to push a new number into it and then setting that state with your new numbers is not going to work so this method right here is overall a bad idea and one way to solve this and there are several ways that you could solve this is this time around we're going to set our random numbers but here we're going to create an, an entirely new array with our square bracket right here in our square bracket right here we're creating an entirely new instance of an array we are spreading all of our previous numbers in our array into this new array and then we're calling this math.random to effectively push a new number into this array so if i come back i'm going to refresh this page just to clear out any of my previous state although we didn't see any of the state updates because we're mutating but just to clear everything now if i click add ran random number you see it does indeed add these numbers so here we are creating a copy instead of just pushing a new number to the state now we have our remove last number function and you might think that it's a good idea to okay we'll just use the array.pop method so on random numbers we call array.pop or random numbers.pop on the array and then we set our random numbers with this random numbers array with the kind of popped value out of there so you know the pop method removes the final value of an array you would think that this would remove the last number of the array but if i click on remove last number you can see we don't see any state updates that's because we're doing the same thing here the push and pop methods are going to mutate an array they're not going to create a separate copy so one way that you can solve this and I'll, I'll show you a different way here in a sec but one way you can solve this is using the slice method because slice is going to return a shallow copy of an array so here we set the rate of numbers to be the previous numbers but then we call the slice method to remove the final number but this slice method it returns like i said a shallow copy so we're returning a new copy of the array we are not just mutating the numbers array so if we come back and i just refresh the page here and then we add some more numbers 
and then we remove the last number, you can see it works as expected because we're creating a copy instead of doing a mutation. And to continue this theme here, I have this replace numbers function. So here it replaces a number at an index. And this, this could be something very common that you might want to do. You take your state array, you grab a value at an index or you have some index, and then you replace that with a new number or a new value. And on its surface, this looks like fine logic to replace a value in an array. But if we click on this replace button, you see nothing really occurs here. So I'm going to refresh here, but the way that we're going to fix this is we're going to, of course, create a copy instead. And this time around, we are going to use the map method to do so. So here we set the random numbers, we take the previous numbers, and then we call prevnumbers.map. And then we are going to check, okay, does the index match the passed in index? So the map method takes the value and the index, or is going to give you the value in the index for every item in your array. Does the index of the value that you're iterating over match the passed in index? If so, replace that with a random number, else just keep it as the original number. And now if I add some numbers, I'll remove the last number, I'll replace this number here, and you can see it actually replaces the number here because the map method is going to create a new copy of the array. It is not going to mutate the piece of state. What matters here is the principle of not mutating arrays and making sure that you're familiar with the JavaScript method enough to know whether it mutates or whether it creates a copy. Because as you can see in these examples, this can create issues if you're not paying attention to things. But now let's move on to sorting numbers here. So if I click sort numbers, again, you see nothing occurs. Let me refresh. Let's go fix it. And then here in our sort numbers function, we originally just call the sort method on the numbers array and then set random numbers with this newly sorted array. But unfortunately in JavaScript, the sort method, it mutates. It doesn't create a copy. So a better strategy for this is to still use a sort method, but create a copy of the array first. So here we pass in a function, we get the previous numbers. And if you're not sure how passing a function in uh, state setters works, check out some of my previous videos on this. But we create a new array with the spread operator first. So this is a completely new array. And then we sort that new array. But since we create a new copy of this array first right here, that allows us to sort it and it will update the state because it is a new array. So if we add some numbers, let's add a bunch, you can see they're not sorted. But if I click this, you can see a few of those numbers hopped around. So they are sorted, but let's replace some of these numbers here. And maybe I could make it more obvious. And now let's click sort again. You can see it resorts it again. Let's remove numbers. And now we have this uh, completely unnecessary component to working as we want it to because we're making sure not to mutate our arrays. But let me refresh this. I will still like use some of these common methods like push and pop, but I'll just create a copy first. So what I'll do here is move this. And then instead of just mutating this random numbers array, what I'll do is say const random numbers copy is equal to, and then you can just use the spread operator with random numbers to create a copy of that array. And now I can do random numbers dot copy dot push and push a new value in there. And then we can set random numbers copy to be our updated state. So I can still use this push method if I wanted to. Uh, looking at this right now, this looks about the same here, but sometimes writing the logic out like this, it can be helpful in this instance. I would actually probably just keep this right here, but sometimes this can be a way to do it that uh, works pretty well. And you can see it doesn't cause any issues there. 
if we come back, we could do the very same thing for the pop method. So right here, we can create a copy, but instead of doing push, we can do pop, and then we can set the random numbers copy here, and I'll comment this out. And then if we remove last number, we see it works. Just for good measure, I will refresh, add some of these, remove them. You see everything still works here. So you can, if you want to still use some of those more kind of common methods, you can totally do so. Sometimes I'll go that route depending on how my logic is set up. Sometimes that makes sense to do, but often I might just use spread operator and add the value in right there or something along those lines. But like here, I kind of prefer this logic of popping over like doing this right here. And you could also, another very reasonable way to do this would be I could pass in a function here as well. And then instead of just returning the prev numbers dot slice, you could basically put this logic in here. But then instead of setting the random numbers, we'll just return the random numbers copy. And then we got this and then I'll do this. And this is another reasonable way to do it. So you know, you're still passing in a function, making sure you're using the most updated kind of previous numbers, but then you're still creating a copy of it here. You're making sure to pop the final number and then you're returning your new numbers copy. And I believe if I refresh, we go through, I remove, everything still works as expected. So there's a ton of ways to do this. Sometimes I like using the spread operator and doing that sort of thing. Sometimes I like using uh, some of the other methods, but TLDR, don't mutate your arrays. Know what your JavaScript methods do, whether they mutate or create copies, and make sure that you're not doing any mutations. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully those examples help solidify this concept, and I'll see you in that next one.